I mean, for years and years and years at dinner parties or get-togethers or something, somebody always comes up to me and says, who killed that little girl? And the little girl, of course, was JonBenet Ramsey. And we go back to the night of December 25, 26 of 1996, and JonBenet would be 24 years of age today. Her life was taken, and two people who are remarkable, Fleet and Priscilla White, and they have maintained silence for, I don't know, forever. And they have, I think, out of frustration, particularly out of Charlie Brennan's great work where he gets to see some of that grand jury that wanted to indict the two of them, John and Patsy, they're beginning to speak. And who do they choose to speak to? The man, Alan Pendergast from Westward, who, I don't know, over 30 years that I've known Alan, give or, give or take probably more, I don't think there's a better investigative reporter, and he's a dear friend. We every once will go eat lunch together and tell stories. And actually, the last time we were lunch, I think we were talking about the Whites. And so he did a story that came down at Westward. And you go to our website, 710knus.com, and click right over into Alan's story entitled, John Benet Ramsey, How the Investigation Got Derailed and Why It Still Matters, and the selfie, the mystery selfie of the guest last night at the Salem party. What does it mean to the future of Denver Radio? So Alan is here. The Whites are here. Just do a quick overview. And we broke away talking about that night on CNN. And uh, I remember it so well. I was in Winter Park. We were skiing. And, and Patsy and John Ramsey appear on CNN. And Patsy looks so out of it. And they start talking about hold your babies close. There's a killer out there. But pick it up if you will. Well, I mean, part of the context of this, this is five, six days after their daughter was found dead. They have not yet spoken to the police, given any formal interviews. Uh, that had been fended off when they were in, before they left for Atlanta at the funeral, saying they just weren't up to it. Uh, so they haven't sat down with the police, but they're talking directly to America about, uh, you know, the fact that they feel they need to defend themselves. And and I, this is right after, of course, the Whites having talked to John Ramsey about the need to come back to Boulder and talk to the police. Uh, the way this is spun later is that uh, it was Fleet's idea to go on CNN, and I guess Fleet can address whether that's true or not. Uh, no, um, we had no idea of uh, about the CNN appearance until we uh, after um, this would be on would have been on uh, January the first of nineteen ninety seven. That's when we had our conversation with uh, with John uh, at the pause home, and then the. And uh, after which, uh, John indicated that, yes, you're right, uh, Priscilla and Fleet, we're, we, we do need to go back to Boulder. Uh, and uh, so then he, we were invited to come over to the pause house the next day to, uh, you know, to have some, you know, food that had been brought over and so forth after the funeral. So we did uh, arrive there in the morning and and uh, uh, and. and we were told, I can't remember who, who, who told us, that John and Pat were waiting for a car that was going to be coming to pick them up uh, uh, to take them into, into, into Atlanta to, uh, to make an appearance on CNN. And, of course, we had no idea. Uh, and um, uh, I think at that point, Priscilla and I just said, well, that's... Yeah, we, we weren't filled in or clued in on how that had happened. Um, I think it's been speculated, I guess is the best way of putting it, that, that perhaps Rod Westmoreland uh, had arranged, had actually made the arrangement with CNN, but I don't know that to be true. Um, so at that point, uh, Priscilla went in and I think helped Patsy out uh, getting ready to go to the into town, and then uh, and I um, just kind of sat with John and he, he had he had very little to say and uh, about it and I didn't ask um, and so the um, car came uh, and uh, they got in and drove into Atlanta to do the show and of course we uh, you know mm -hmm. the rest is history on the on the CNN interview but to answer your question Peter no I, we did, we had no knowledge well, they, of the C yeah. CNN inter interview uh, and she wanted to is it true she wanted to wear her diamonds well, no, she had them on. She had them on. She had a d very large diamond ring on, and I recommended. And she'd also, uh, she was so drugged. Yeah. She was having trouble getting dressed. And so I went and just tried to help her in a very small bathroom. And uh, so I just recommended she not wear a, a mink coat or a diamond, a large diamond ring on a CNN interview. Um, and that was that moment 
where she said, hold your babies close. And she's clearly, I mean, as someone in recovery, I know it when I see it. And she's out of it. She's mm-hmm. totally out of it. And uh, you wonder what the thinking was to put them on national TV, except she wants to, I mean, they're, again, they're already laying the blame someplace else. And, well, and, and uh, I mean, it really did signal the way this case was going to go. I mean, yeah. this is not your typical murder investigation. I mean, no. uh, the, I mean, imagine... Imagine a similar press conference with Mark Kloss. No. You know, something like that. No. I mean, Mark Kloss would be talking to the police. Well, we right? talked about yeah. that. I actually remember. So, I mean, this really helped to frame public opinion about this case, for better or worse. And it also sort of signaled that there was going to be this kind of campaign going on. I mean, the Ramses mm-hmm. had hired, like, a public relations mm-hmm. firm in addition to the attorneys. Well, I remember the guy. The guy tried to set me up. Uh, he wanted to meet me by myself. And Pat Corton. <laughs> tell you that story, brother. And. Come on, have and I said okay, and it was and, he, and I lived in the mountains then, and he said I'll take you to the chart house in Genes in Genesee. I brought Chuck Green, and the look on his face when I walked in with Chuck Green, because now I had a witness, and we never talked about the Ramses that night. That's I mean I there's a lot of stuff I guess I was saying I've never said before, but um, I knew I mean I think. And also then I took out that full-page ad in the Rocky and the Denver Post, and we talked about Mark. I said, here's a guy that the first time when he was accused of his little daughter, I think her name was Heidi, wasn't it? And, and they Polly. said, Polly. Yeah. And he said, he went right to the cops. He said, put me on the box. I want to take a lie detector test. And then let's go find a real guy. And the Ramseys, of course. Even though they would have thought that he committed oh, the crime. Oh, they, they did think he did it. I mean, he, he showed up, and it was in... Palo Alto, I forget, it was in maybe Sausalito or Palo Alto. I, the, I mean, at the time I knew the story. And actually, I got to know him. He used to do the radio show with us. And he used to say, there's something called the true victim profile. And John and Patsy were anything but the true victim profile. Well, Peter, the um, uh, in, from our point of view, uh, um, the... Um, the 800-pound gorilla that's been sitting in the corner of this of of everything that's happened over the last 18 years is what distinguishes the Ramsey murder from, for example, a murder that had would take place out on East Colfax someplace. Or, that, or better yet, uh, and it, I've I've written about this to take Aaron A. Thompson mm-hmm. and how the Aurora police covered and and actually did Shelley Lowe and Aaron A. Thompson murdered that little girl. And you compare and contrast how the Aurora guys handled Aaron A. and Shelley Lowe and how Boulder handled the Ramses. And I remember at the time, uh, Alberta Simmons made a big deal out of how the cops, they were handling Aaron A. and Shelley in the absolute correct manner. But what Alberta did, he says, cool, compare and contrast it to these wealthy white people in Boulder. And you come up with two, you know, we talk about tales of the city. They told two different stories, and I thought that was really a, an interesting critique that Albertus made at the time. Well, and, and ironically, the Aaron A. Thompson case is also the case that the Denver Post went to court to get the indictments from Absolutely. the grand jury Absolutely. released. There and, you go. And, and, and there you go. that's the law you look at when you say, why are we getting only part of these well, documents in the Ramsey case? That comes back to what Priscilla said. What, you know, when it's said and done and you guys have broken that silence, what do you want? You want the truth. I uh, and I think we all do, Peter. I think there's no uh, question. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, and as Alan pointed out, the the um, this is a Supreme Court decision, People v. Thompson, and it, I think it was mm-hmm. I think it was 2006. Yes, it was. was. Um, and there's no question uh, that the um, that it, within the context of the Colorado Criminal Justice Records Act. Um, in, uh, under which d- the Denver Post asked for the entirety of the. Uh, mm-hmm. Of the uh, the people v versus Thompson mm-hmm. uh, indictment, absolutely um, that had been redacted by the Arapaho, well by the district attorney, mm-hmm. and then and the and the, those redactions were um, you know upheld by the uh, by the Arap- Arapaho uh, district court. Anyway, um, uh, the Denver Post uh, took it you know on a. Uh, original proceeding took it straight to the uh, mm-hmm. Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court clearly said that that a um, that a as an official action within the Colorado Criminal Justice Records Act, 
uh, that indictment must be disclosed in its entirety, with the exception, the only exception being the uh, redaction of an, uh, the name or the identi- identifying information regarding a, uh, an alleged victim of sexual assault. There's no question about it. And, uh, and of course, that was the basis that Priscilla and I, um, among other some other uh, uh, um, issues, uh, uh, brought an action against uh, uh, the district attorney just earlier this year, asking for the for the remainder of the of the indictments sure. that that had not been released in the litigation um, last fall. But here's my opinion: when we saw the truth of Aaron A. and Shelley, these were not powerful people; they didn't have any mm-hmm. cover-ups involved in it. And mm-hmm. to see the truth about the Ramsey grand jury, you're going to see a lot of prominent names. Do you agree or disagree? I don't want to put you on the spot. I mean, I, I guaranteed myself I wouldn't do that to either one of you. But I, I think what, there'll be a, what, what was that question? Well, again? I think there'll Peter, be a I'm lot sorry. of look, look, when we saw the truth about Aaron A. and Shelley or Aaron and Shelley, but they're not juiced into. They're not powerful people. They didn't have hot dog. Well, they did have one prominent attorney, but they didn't have. They weren't chief executive officers of a Lockheed uh, Bingo. Owned sub- subsidiary. Bingo. That was bingo. Bingo. At the bingo. time, worth uh, uh, around two hundred million dollars. Bingo. And the Denver Thank Post you. was so interested Thank you. in getting that information. <laughs> Thank you. But they're not so interested in finding out about the John Benet Ramsey well, grand that, jury. I mean, that, that to me was part of what was so interesting about uh, meeting the Whites was they had got they were they were going to court over this action. They they had gone to the city council about getting some and other by the way out of their own pocket. Too. Yeah, yeah. And and if you tried to find coverage of this up in Boulder, good luck. I mean, the Daily or Camera. Denver. Or, or Denver, or the Denver Post. Yeah. Uh, nobody was writing about this. No. So that was one reason that, uh, you know, we ended up spending some time together was, you know, there seemed to be sort of a media blackout on these folks. There's no question. I mean, even in, even in the, when, the, when the height of this, there were media sides. I remember it so well. Channel 9 was the biggest offender of any of this. The Ramsey Mountain News, Lisa Levitt Reichman was the second biggest offender. But they were people at Channel 4. When John and Patsy did that staged press conference and they brought in the, these were Patsy's, I guess, best and brightest reporters when Paula Woodward got to ask that. And by the way, you had to make a condition. You would not ask about the investigation of the murdered little girl. And at the point I said, what are you going to talk to Patsy about, the Euro? I mean, what is it that you were, and they, remember they took a hotel room, they staged it, they took the furniture out, they brought in lights, they had security, so nobody would crash it. And well, P- Peter, uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 Boulder and Denver um, press, mm-hmm. uh, certainly the the printed <laughs> the printed the print press, print media, as well as the television uh, and the broadcast media, is all kind of the the the, uh, the Ramsey investigation and everything that it that it uh, you know brought brought along uh, had a very very large uh, influence on on the evolution no of, of, of of no of media here uh, in you know they in, were i mean to, uh, up to this day and that and, and largely as a result of a, a lot of that that in our opinion explains we can explain why there was a why there was a media blackout uh, after I mean, let's face it, the, 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 the indictments were released, but uh, the, the district attorney delivered 18 pages, <laughs> delivered yeah. two, two indictments, only four, four pages came out. So that's, to, to, for us to go back in, um, not that, no, I you know, know it, yeah, you know, yeah, there, there should right. be some notice. And, yeah, and of course... And they should support us. I, the press should be right there. They uh, won't be. Don't, don't look for it, because Channel 9 invested... Since Jump Street, they've invested in the innocence of the Ramses, the so-called Ramsey Mountain News. As, as did the Boulder Daily Camera. The, I, I agree with you. Yeah. And there were selected people uh, that were there. They were simply butt boys for John and Patsy. Well, I mean, there was a kind of narrative that came out, and, and it, it, it served a lot of different agendas, I think, is my, my read remember, of this. But the truth was... The truth was not part of it. What what, what what it was was it was a convenient story that that, that starts with... Alex Hunter showing up saying, we don't have enough evidence to indict. And it, he pockets what the grand jury did. And, and yet, that doesn't come out for 15 years. Yep. Then Mary Lacey comes out and says, essentially, uh, we believe there's an intruder. Horrible. We're, we're going to base our investigation around this phantom DNA. 
That leads to John Mark Carr. It leads to an exoneration yeah. of the Ramses, which again throws things back on these other guys. suspects, on these including guys. the you know the, the whites being made to be look like suspects. You know, it's 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 just one sort of defamation yeah. after another, and and so when the when it turns out there really is something the grand jury did, that news is quickly discounted. It's oh, like it's, oh that's old news. It's in and out. And and we know the Ramses were exonerated. But one thing it so, did do, I think it killed Paula's book. Well, I don't know, but uh, uh, well, we haven't there, seen no, it yet. We, well, and you ain't going to see it. Uh, I need to take a turnaround. When we come back, let's begin with when you get the phone call to come to the house that the, the little girl is missing. It's Thursday morning, December the 18th, 2014. Fleet and Priscilla White, Alan Pendergast are with us. Believe me when I tell you, this is the best read. 710knus.com. Hit on our website. Jump over to Alan's great work. Peter Boyles. News Talk 710. KNUS. This was, I guess, the best of them. Werewolf of Boulder, and this is what started it for Don Reggae and myself and Media Horror. Werewolf of Boulder, Awu, and of course the werewolf was John Ramsey. I saw a werewolf with an Italian menu in his hand Walking down Boulder's Pro Street Mall He was looking for a place called Plaza Jays Gonna get himself some spaghetti and meatballs This was what started it all for Donnie Reggae and myself and Media Whore. Thursday morning, December the 18th. All those songs are available on the Internet. They're all yours. I feel like KTEL Records. It's Thursday, December the 18th, 2014. And um, just remarkable on uh, off-air and on-air conversations with Fleet and Priscilla White and Alan Pendergast. And Craig Silverman just walked in. He's on the other side of the glass. Uh, just as an aside, we've been playing these parody songs, and it's been so many years, but I met this amazing character by the name of Don Reggae, and Donnie lives in Boulder. I got a Christmas card from Donnie, and he has more talent in his fingernail than I have in my entire body. But I would come up with these songs, and I'd write some of them. Or I'd write, I think I wrote most of them, but Donnie took them and put them to music. And Werewolf of Boulder was, I think, our first one. It was, of course, that was John Ramsey, the Werewolf of Boulder. It is, um, let me just back this out again for people who are just joining us. Yesterday, Westward's Alan Pendergast did, I think, the all-time best thing in the story of the Ramses that um, anyone has ever done. And it's up on our website, 710knus.com. You can click across. In the studio, two brave people have been through quite a, while, quite a lot, Fleet and Priscilla White. And there was a moment, and we were talking about the Boulder Data Canon, and Ms. Krebs' story. I'll, I'm going to let you begin that part of that story. Well, I mean, yeah, we I, I, we were talking about the way the media played in and out of this and access issues being important and people picking sides. Uh, the camera had always been very sympathetic to the Ramses and mm -hmm. critical of the police. And suddenly, about three months after the grand jury was over, this story surfaces on the front page of the Daily Camera. And, and, and the Whites have told me they got a call, I think, about it 10 o'clock the night before, last second. You know, you know you're in trouble when they call you for comment, like yeah. at a time when they're not going to reach you, and right. they're just sort of or you're not available for comment. Right, right. Um, and this is a story, and it's copyrighted, and it's by Barry Hartman, who doesn't usually do reporting. He was the editorial page mm -hmm. editor, and it's a story about a mystery woman from California who may be providing a significant breakthrough in the Ramsey case, and she has a story about being sexually abused all her life since she was three and this shadowy ring of pedophiles that were doing this, and somehow this is all connected to the Ramsey case. And, and these people are not identified, but the kicker is there's, there's a link in the piece where it says, you know, she knows the Ramseys through the White family. Yeah. And so you have to assume that somehow they're connected to all of this shadowy activity. Um, well, as it turned out, the police had already interviewed this woman by the time the story ran out. They'd spent, they'd spent five hours talking to her, and if you read those interviews which the Whites ultimately got released some years later, you begin to understand this, this woman is, is an emotionally troubled person, mm -hmm. and, and this story is incoherent, and it's easily disproven, because she's saying things like her mother and her niece mm -hmm. were at the Whites for Christmas right. dinner with Jean Benet and the family. Right. I mean, it's pretty well documented who was at that dinner. Mm -hmm. I mean, Priscilla, you have photographs, yes? I mean, Correct. You, you know who was at your house for dinner that night. So, so this is an incredible, I mean, this is out of nowhere, and suddenly it's smearing these people. Uh, and I think, you know, 
it, it's it, you have to sort of construct how did this happen or why did it happen? Yeah, and as it turns out, again, this is stuff that you have to find out later. But I mean, Fleet can talk about the documents that were ultimately released and how this woman yeah. came to the attention of Alex Hunter, who endorses sure. her in the yeah. story. Sure, uh, this happened in uh, February of two thousand, which was just four months after the. Uh, after Mr. Hunter um, chose to not, not disclose the uh, uh, the indictments, uh, and of course uh, Priscilla and I both testified before the grand jury, and and you know this is uh, years after the after the murder, the in, the investi- investigation been going on for. For for some time, and um, I think uh, certainly the the police detectives and and I'm sure that Alex Hunter knew who Priscilla and I were, and that uh, you know um, they they knew the um, the facts uh, uh, you know backward and forward, and and this we we testified, we were witnesses of the grand jury, and then uh, um, four months later, uh, as Alan mentioned, there's this headline. Uh, a bleeding headline story about this woman from California. Um, she, uh, her grand, um, her grandparents were uh, old friends of my folks, and uh, and my uh, my mother would kind of keep in touch with uh, um, uh, with the uh, with her grandmother and send her you know Christmas cards and so forth. So uh, Nancy Krebs uh, had this portfolio <laughs> apparently of of uh, family photographs, and that was her that was her um, uh, her big uh, link to the White family, which she of course she presented to uh, uh, to uh, a guy by the name of Lil Hill, Lee Hill, who had who had flown out know. there on. On the daily can- on Barry Hartman's nickel to interview her, um, it's a bit of a long story, but uh, I think the uh, the the, the um, uh, clearly the only reason that the Boulder Daily Camera printed the story is because Alex Hunter had in- had endorsed her uh, credibility, and and that was uh, uh, certainly um, uh, borne out later in our conversations with people that uh, who became for, uh, uh, former uh, Scripps employees and no, were no longer with their camera. And uh, then later, uh, in 2000, when we brought an action in district court to uh, release all of the investigative records from the, uh, Krebs, uh, from the Krebs investigation, which played out over three months, which is a, 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 in, insane in itself. Um, and we did. We were successful in getting those uh in getting her just her police interviews, uh, not the uh, uh, which is 350 pages or whatever it is of of of, of lies, <laughs> but on the other hand, the district court did not release any of the investigative uh, uh, information in order to offset the, the lies. So the the internet went wild with all these uh, lies and and no offsetting information and and. Uh, uh, so as recently as just this spring, we brought another action in in Boulder District Court to to obtain the investigative records from the f- from from the Krebs uh, fiasco and and uh, uh, and uniformly the, the the Boulder Police Department and the and the District Attorney uh, certainly Stan Garnett have uh, opposed the release of those investigative records uh, and uh, w- which. Um, Makes us want want them all the more, I guess is the way of putting it. Well, and also what was important to us at the time, what we noticed is that the timing of this story coming out, I believe that they knew about her for a long time. Sure. But all of a sudden it comes out the day yeah. that Schiller's movie is... Yeah. Beat. So it was basically we were the advertisement for his movie. Well, and of course, the um, this, has, this has to do with the sex ring uh, theory of... John Bonet's murder, and this dates way back to uh, just r- r- really days after the crime. That the that there was kind of rumors swirling around that there was a sex ring, mm-hmm. and it involved John well, and I, or one was trying to yeah. get the other involved, and this sort of thing. Well, wasn't it, it, that one of those idiot books? That, well, of course, and then yeah. Stephen Singular, uh, what an idiot, who was identified early in early in Jan- in the 1997 as being working on a screenplay. I think what it was a in fool. A, he was in a James uh, Br- uh, Brook uh, New York yeah. Times article. Yeah. So Singular pops up. We got a letter from him in the spring of '97, uh, and then fast forward to um, 
uh, to 98, and uh, then Jameson, uh, you know, uh, they have a chat with uh, Gerald Merritt and another and, one. Uh, and uh, you're bringing uh, up the names, man. Uh, and and uh. and um, Stephen Singular about uh. you know this. Um, you know this, this handing kind of this, the body back through the door. Anyway, yeah, basically, I mean, yeah. Almighty. You know, it was, it was all about the, the internet almighty. pornography and so forth. So, you know. um, and then of course they talked about um, myself and yeah. my daughter, and yeah. Yeah. and it, uh, you know, so we we knew that there was going to be maybe a rough road ahead on that one, and and uh, but 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 this, after the grand jury, we thought, well, maybe it'll slow down. But but of course, in the in the middle of the grand jury, we got the Schiller book, which promoted Singular. Uh, oh, and then, uh, uh, and then of course, it, and that was in February of nineteen of nineteen ninety nine, and then in uh, May, May June of nineteen ninety nine, Singular uh, <laughs> uh, pub, publishes huh? publishes his book, yeah. and uh, it it's so all bad. it's all about the, uh, the, the 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 pedophile ring of of influential people in in uh, in Boulder mm-hmm. and throughout Colorado that it, that were involved in this so bad and of course it, it, uh, then when Nancy Krebs emerged mm-hmm. in uh, you know all the, this, it, it goes on and on well Peter. you know what's the, amazing it the, is it the, is so the, twisted and yet and so impossible and probable Stephen Singular you talk about people that have a really special place in hell uh, Stephen Singular did a book about Alan Berg and it was I mean, it wasn't even close. And um, it turned out that he simply talked to, I think, just about one person. And he writes this book. And, there was, I mean, I tragically lived through all of that. And it wasn't even remotely close. I mean, the, the book that to read about that horrible time was, was written by Kevin Flynn and Gary Gerhardt. Uh, but Stephen Singular, and um, I did everything I could to... But then he came back with a book, and he... That's, well, he came fresh uh, off of, of the Simpson trial. Yeah, he came, and I, I mean, he was just, he's just a horrible person. I mean, I don't even know that he wrote for the Denver Post, and I don't know whatever happened to him. Oh, well, he's still around. Is he? Uh, uh, no, uh, Stephen Singular, and uh, he, he, he was bestowed uh, yeah, uh, a, a call by yeah. somebody within the LA within the apparently the LAPD yeah. we're led to believe yeah. about this um, uh, tainted blood I know just, uh, you know in, in Simpson he's a, and, 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 and it's uh, not true I mean he's a weak st- I mean it, 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 he wrote a, and he wrote a book Peter oh, that, was, that was published by a guy in the name of Michael Viner mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. West Los Angeles yeah. uh, which is a story in itself and um, of course Schiller plays out in the in the Simpson yeah. Uh, you know, all of those phenomenon, and, and then, uh, all then well, of course, they all came here. The, 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 they all, they all came here, and they were ushered yeah. in by Alex Hunter and yeah, no. you know uh, uh, Barry Sheck, uh, uh, oh. well, Henry Lee. Well, I mean, the collateral okay. damage here. I mean, the, one of the questions that has to be asked is why was Hunter endorsing this witness? Saying, you know, there's a quote in there from mm-hmm. in Hartman's story from Alex Hunter saying she's very believable. <laughs> And this is Jeez. this is days after the police have interviewed her and have already started. I mean, they took 11 weeks to clear the whites. Alex, but. Alex Hunter's office was an open door to anybody. In fact, what was it, Jeff um, Shapiro. Shapiro? Jeff Shapiro. Guys to go in there and sit in there. Well, he I, thought you know, it was deputized. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's insanity. I mean, the things that we know now that we didn't know then, I guess, but oh my heavens. And Stan Garnett and Tom Carr don't want us to get those records. I, you know what? I, as I said, and I think Fleet's absolutely right, you're not talking about some $200 million deal when you're talking about Aaron A. and Aaron, Aaron Thompson and Shelley Lowe. And uh, I've all, I mean, you get, I, you know, you're, you're bringing up these names from these moments, and I remember being so angry that, they, that people would pay attention to these people, and um, Singular is, I mean, truly the worst, and I mean, I can give you, you know, I think as bad as Paula Woodward is, as bad as Channel 9 is and was, Singular was worse, except he wasn't, he didn't have a a day-to-day, you know, Singular didn't have a a television show every day, the Denver, or excuse me, Rocky Mountain News, which is owned by the same outfit as owned the Daily Camera, right? Right. Yeah, so they were... Um, I am close to scripts. A, yeah, scripts Howard. I'm close to a pause. When I come back, I want to ask you what you think happened that night, twenty-five, twenty-six. Oh, you're going to put me on the spot. I'm yes, not I sure do. I can satisfy. Take you. a run at it. All right. Um, again, uh, you know, you. It's like 
I'm sitting here and I'm, you're bringing, and I was like, I'm getting a scab pulled back, and I'm sure it's worse for you too. But I think, God, I remember those people. And I remember being in a parking lot one time when one of the tabloid guys wanted to punch Jeff in the face. And we were up there trying to meet somebody. And it was almost like, he said, if he gets out of the car, I'm going to punch him. And I went, oh, this is going to get good. <laughs> Hang on, everybody. 710 KNUS, 710KNUS.com, and on the KNUS app, available for iPhone, Android, and all major smartphones. The voice of the people, of the people, Peter Boyles, on News Talk 710. KNUS. We should leave on with this one. Charlie and Philip and Lisa L. Reichman, Benny and Bertha and Sherry Keen Osborne. But can you recall? This is the best. Don Reggae, Peter Boyles present. Paul of the Brown Nose Ring. Paul of the Ramsey. Here we go, 710-KNUS, Denver's Talk Station, good morning, Thursday, the 18th of December, and uh, we got some follow-up ideas for after the first of the year to continue pushing for the truth on what happened, grand jury investigations. Fleet and Priscilla White, Alan Pendergast are with us, final couple of moments, capitalists coming up, Alan Pendergast is with us again, 710KNUS.com, and read it's a lengthy piece, but it's probably, well, I, not probably, it is the best I've read. By the way, before I come, uh, Fleet and Priscilla, do you think that Alan captures this story as well as anybody ever has? Oh, oh there's no comparison. There, nothing's been written like this. There's not, Thank what you. name one that's even close. None. Uh, Larry, Larry Schiller's book? Please. Yeah. I mean, agreed. John Patsy Ramsey's book? <laughs> come on. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. $64,000 question. What happened that night? Well, I think one thing that I would suggest to people is to look at actually the James Kohler book, Foreign Faction, because the the only way you're going to get at what really happened that night is to start, I guess, shredding away some of the mythology about this case. And, and one of the things that, um, that Kohler does, I think, very systematically is show why the intruder theory has a bunch of holes in it. I mean, I think the first thing you have to do is eliminate the idea that somebody came in through yeah. the basement window and did all these things that night. I agree. And uh, I, I, I've never seen compelling evidence of an intruder. What evidence was cited has been, I think, pretty much debunked over the years. And Kohler does a good job. Of that. He's, he was a chief investigator under Lacey, oddly enough. Yeah. And he, his work was totally running at odds with where that office wanted to go with this. The next thing I think I would suggest is that you look at the evidence we do have, which has to do with the ransom note. And uh, clearly there's been a lot of handwriting analysis done on that by various people, and there's a lot of conflicting opinions. But uh, all that stuff's on the Internet. One can look at that stuff. Uh, one can look a little bit at the fiber evidence, which I think also may be stronger than people believe mm -hmm, about agree. where people were in that house and, who, you know, things that are hard to explain, mm -hmm. like what fibers under that duct tape that was sure. on that girl's mouth. Sure. Uh, you know, and I think people can, can sort of draw some conclusion that I mean, I don't say that this would necessarily hold up in front of a, uh, you know, if it ever went to trial. I mean, as we know, that's. A lot of water's gone under the bridge since then, but but there's an awful lot of compelling information there, and I it, it, it's almost encouraging in a way to find out, although under these circumstances that that there that the people on that grand jury who worked hard for over a year actually did think there was enough evidence to prosecute somebody, and and they may not have known exactly who did what, but it would have been nice yeah. to see this get to trial, I think, in some fashion. Fleet, um, what? Where we go next, and obviously we'll do it all of us, all of us, hopefully together. What next? Well, we are still very interested in, in, uh, of course, uh, uh, having the um, uh, the indictments, uh, the, at yeah. least the, the the papers that were delivered by by Stan Garnett to the uh, to the judge uh, in October of of uh, two thousand and thirteen. Um, the, as far as we're concerned, uh, the 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 statute and the law, uh, People v. Thompson, is 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 clear, and it and it should uh, it, sh it it should carry the day. 
Um, unfortunately, uh, pro se litigants, especially in Boulder District Court, if it has anything to do with the Ramseys, are at a significant disadvantage, and we can attest to that uh, due to what was done, has been done to our attempts this year. To, on the one hand, to get the Krebs records, on, which, as far as we're concerned, will be very could potentially be very telling about not just the Krebs episode, but also uh, you know other. Uh, aspects of of what was going on uh, uh, just generally uh, in the in the criminal justice system at that point in time, uh, and then of course uh, uh, that was uh, that was dismissed on a on the basis of res judicata, which is simply that it had already been litigated back in 2000 when when we went into district court to get the uh, Krebs records. Um, and then, of course, uh, following that, uh, we filed the action against uh, uh, Stan Garnett, asking for the the, the uh, remainder of the 14 pages, and any other uh, records of official action that, under law, must be must be disclosed. Um, and that and the same judge, by the way, uh, who is the only judge on the Boulder District Court bench that can hear civil cases regarding the Ramseys, uh, any Ramsey-related matter, because all the other ones were, were former uh, district sure. attorney uh, uh, staffers. staffers, yeah, and absolutely. now they, you know, because yeah. of that they can't, they can't hear a, a Ramsey civil case. In any event, uh, the same judge uh, dismissed uh, uh, you know, our, just a request for a show cause hearing under the, under the uh, Colorado Criminal Justice Records uh, statutes, uh, on the base, on the same basis of res judicata, because it had already been litigated uh, in the uh, when you know Brennan versus Garnett back in 2013. So we're, I guess, licking our wounds is the right way of putting it. But we haven't given up, and we're going to continue to try, however we can, to to get the Krebs records and get the uh, the indictments and um, anything anything else we can that Indeed. that we can get under Colorado law that will shed light on. Uh, on what happened to the investigation and, and hopefully uh, what happened to John Bonet. Priscilla. So we thank Kay Younes and we thank Westward oh, yeah. and both of you because we need some help. Well, we're here. This guy, Alan, you you parked it, man. It was so well, good. Thanks a lot for having us. No, 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 please. And um, I have something I need to do for you guys. And then after the first of the year, we'll start put some pressure on Stan Garnett and say, let's see the papers. Let's see the documents. You have to bypass a lot of media, as you have pointed out. But um, I think maybe the... Uh, well, hopefully they'll get with the program. Yeah, we'll right. see what happens, sir. We hope. Merry Christmas, you guys. Merry Christmas to you. Thanks, Happy pal. You're, you're, you're the man. Thanks,